That means we have recognized all fundamental documents and their constitution. And constitution determines the borders of Donetsk and Lugansk regions while they were part of Ukraine. But we are counting on, on resolution of all these uh, differences. Um, that th these differences will be sorted out before uh, between Kiev government and uh, uh, Lugansk and Donetsk uh, regions. But uh, for the moment, we understand that this is probably impossible uh, in this current situation. But we're hoping for this to happen in the future. As for using military force abroad, of course, we, we signed an agreement yesterday. And in these agreements with Donetsk and Lugansk, Public Republic, there are relevant points which state that we are going to continue. Uh, we will provide uh, all type of assistance, including military assistance. If there is a conflict, of course, if it's necessary, we will, we will follow through on the obligations that we undertook. Also a question on Donbass. Ukraine does not want the sovereignty of these two republics and our decision, and they are not happy with our decision. Sorry, what did you say? I'm saying that these republics are not recognized by Kiev, and they are not happy uh, with our decision either. Yes. After what happened today and yesterday, do you see any prospects for rehabilitating the uh, relationships between Kiev and Moscow? What should Moscow do and what should Kiev do in this regard? We did discuss these questions uh, in our negotiations with our European partners and also with Americans. I think it did not, it was not said publicly, but I'll say this. Naturally, the question is what do both parties have to do from Kiev side, from our side, so that we could regulate this issue in the long-term historic perspective, so we could uh, coexist friendly without any military conflicts. I'll, uh, I'll uh, disclose this secret. First thing that needs to be done is to recognize the will of the people in Sevastopol in, and in Crimea. And I would like to emphasize how is this will of people worse than the will of people of Kosovo? So, uh, in Kosovo it was a formal decision, here it was done through a referendum. Uh, nobody could force people um, on the you know, barrels to come and vote. They just came voluntarily and they voted. And you have to respect that decision. So, and every, those, those who consider themselves to be democratic countries, they have to recognize this fact. This is number one. Second, so we are saying this publicly, and this is uh, one of the questions of uh, around which we have disagreements with Washington and NATO. We are categorically against Ukraine joining NATO, because this is a threat to us. And I've mentioned that many times. And in this relation, of course, our position is based on what many people say, including people in the Western capitals, that the best resolution of this issue would be so that uh, our colleagues in the West do not lose their face, the best thing to do would be for Kiev authorities not to, uh, to make a decision not to join NATO and become neutral. That's number two. Number three, unfortunately this is no longer current. I always said that we needed to resolve Donbass issue through 
peaceful negotiations and through implementation of Minsk agreements. And fourth is the most important thing, everything that's been said before, all of that can be turned upside down if our so-called partners continue to pump Kiev authorities with modern types of weapons. So the most important point is, is a certain degree of demilitarization of current Ukraine.